With the start of the Ark World Tour, we found out who the newest character in Guilty Gear Strive was, being, of course, Abba. With the release of a surprisingly highly requested character, everyone began speculating on who the next and final character of Season 3 was going to be. But Arxis didn't give us a lot of time to think about it, as along with the announcement trailer that I'm still gonna have my job in a year, they released a teaser for the fourth and final character of this season. Now I want you to look me in the mask hole and tell me that that's not Slayer. Finally, finally, after three long, grueling years, he will finally be in the game! Slayer, my beloved! It could be Raven, though! How? Like, literally, how? This fucking bat's flying around. Dude's got a flicked up quiff of his haircut. I'm not sure if you fucking noticed. Raven doesn't have the motif of fucking bats. Name me another Arxis character whose motif is bats. Okay, now you're just messing with me. Honestly, I don't know why people think it's Raven. If you ask me, that fucking silhouette looks like Gordo. But that's not the point. The point is Slayer could very well be coming to Guilty Gear Drive. And I am... Um, so happy about it. But some people do have their concerns. Even though Slayer has always been called a Strive character because of reasons, he's got a couple of funky things in his toolkit which some people believe define him and most importantly are potentially going to get removed from the game. But why is that? What are these tools? And what's this meme with him already being a Strive character anyway? Well, how about we look back at Slayer's past and figure that out. Let's talk about how Slayer will play in Guilty Gear Strive. Probably. Slayer originally appeared in the XX series of Guilty Gear games. However, the versions of Slayer that we will be focusing on is the Plus R and Rev 2 versions of the character, as they are the most fleshed out versions of him, and by that I mean I own those two games and most people play them. Do you really want me to dive into the old XX series of games? Don't say yes! Slayer is a rushdown character who relies on getting massive counter hits to deal a ridiculous amount of damage and using extremely powerful defensive options in order to destroy the opponent's mental and get those massive counter hits. How does he have great defense though? Is it a free frame move? A good reversal? A parry? No, silly. You can't hit him. One of the biggest things about Slayer is his unique movement option. Slayer doesn't have a run. He has a unique kind of step dash that teleports him a set distance. And while he is teleporting, he is completely immune to all damage. This means that his mobility is technically pretty low, but Thanks to his fully invincible dash, he's generally able to get in a lot of tricky situations. Obviously, the invincibility is the best bit of the move, but just on its own, it's kinda mid. Like, you teleport to a different place, so yeah, you can dodge an attack, but now you're probably out of position. If only there was a way to get the invincibility and not change your position. Behold, the backdash cancel, or BDC. By jumping during Slayer's backdash, players are able to cancel the backdash immediately without changing their position. You wanna know the best bit? You keep the invincibility from the dash. Now, this is cool because you keep the position, but you're literally in the air. If only there was a way to keep your position and keep the invincibility. This is the true power of the backdash cancel. By doing a tiger knee input, aka a special move input where you press jump right after it, you can jump cancel your dash and then immediately do a special move while still keeping the invincibility. Explosion green screen dot MP4 by being able to add invincibility to literally every single one of this man's special moves, Slayer has one of the strongest defensive games in Guilty Gear. Just to go through the list real quick, this means that Slayer has an invincible punch, an invincible backsway, an invincible command grab. But Temkin fucking wishes he had this. This is one of the most defining things about the character. And when you ask someone who doesn't like fighting Slayer, they will generally point to this as being the most annoying thing in his kit. Bro literally just says, nah, and decides to not take damage from anything. How stupid is that? Very stupid, please keep it in the game. Now all we need to do is learn some basic combos and we can get rolling with some crazy shit. Oh no. 
The other defining feature of Slayer is the complete removal of the Gatling system. Well, okay, I say the complete removal. You still have close slash to fast slash on the ground, and you kind of have Gatlings in the air. Exxon also still lets you link punches to kicks and kicks to dust and stuff like that. Can you tell that I had to record this later? Meaning all of your combos rely on something that anime players fear. Links. Allow me to explain. In Guilty Gear, most characters combo using cancels, where they cancel the recovery frames of an attack with the startup frames of another attack. It's found in every Guilty Gear game on almost every character. We refer to this system as the Gatling system, and it's a staple of the franchise. Systems like this can be found all over fighting games in different ways under different names. However, there is another common system for combos in 2D fighting games. Link-based systems generally don't allow you to cancel the recovery of one normal move into another one, and instead test your execution by having you time your moves so that they hit the opponent while they're still in hit stun. Basically, instead of being able to cancel normals into normals, you have to let them play out in their entirety. Link combos are generally seen as harder than cancel combos, since you have to manually time the actual combo instead of just being able to mash it out. This means that Slayer's ground combos take a bit of technical finesse in order for you to execute them, which is why most of the footage that you're seeing is of bots playing Slayer and me playing a character I actually know how to pilot. It's a really unique way to differentiate the character from the rest of the cast and give Slayer a level of technical skill which none of the other cast members have. Yeah, that's right, type that rage comment in the comment section, you fucking scrub, I said it. Now let's move on to Slayer's variety of special moves. 236P or K is called Mappa Hunch, and it is a fast advancing punch that goes across the ground. Mappa Hunch is generally safe on block, making it a decent tool to get in on the opponent. However, since it is still negative, it's a committal approach option that can leave you in a bad position. The best feature about it though, is that it's a great combo starter if you manage to land a counter hit on your opponent. Since the move goes pretty far and gets a combo on counter hit, it's a pretty good tool to throw out there to piss your opponent off. The next tool that he has is 214P and K, also known as Dandy Step. The move is a back sway that has Slayer go away from the opponent before lunging slightly towards them. This move is basically a stance that has multiple different options out of it. The difference between the punch and the kick versions are the distance and length of the startup, and in XR, the K version follow-ups do more damage. If you press punch while in the stance, you get Pile Bunker, a fast-hitting mid-attack that does a lot of damage and leads to damaging combos. The downside of the move is that it's pretty negative on block, meaning if you mess up and don't actually connect the attack with the opponent, you die. It's great as a whiff punish tool and a way to fish for counter hits, but please be careful with it. You would hate to lose a match because the only thing on your brain is how hard you could bomb. By pressing K, you get crosswise heal. This is a strong anti-air tool that causes Slayer to become invincible above the feet, as well as making him immune to throws. And the move hits the opponent up in the air while dealing a lot of damage. Because it has above the feet invincibility, you can kind of use it in the same way that you would use a 6P, and use it to beat far hitting mid pokes that are really annoying. But again, it is a very committal option, so please use it wisely. By pressing S, you get Under Pressure, a safe hitting mid attack that doesn't give Slayer a lot when the opponent blocks it. Because it's fast and safe, you generally want to use this attack to keep your opponent in check while they're defending. This isn't the only use of the attack though. In Exard, you used to be able to get a four way mix up by doing this before the opponent wakes up. Can you display the tech here? No. The best bit is though, that it has a follow up. If you press heavy slash after using under pressure, you get it's late a plus on block overhead attack that leads to a full combo on hit. In plus R, you could also get this move by just pressing heavy slash, making it very powerful. This move is honestly kind of insane. Maybe it's just my small, weak, stry brain not being able to comprehend something being both an overhead and plus on block, but the fact that it does basically everything you could ever want on a move, with the only downside being that it's kind of reactable raw, makes it an absolute menace, like holy shit! God help you if this is in Strive as it is, because trust me, buddy, you will be seeing it a lot. Well, that covers all of his follow-ups from his stents. What else has he got? Well, with a character who has a 
bunch of damaging mids and a good left, right, and high, low mix up game. Surely there's nothing else in his kit that would add to his mix up potential. His 236H is Bloodsucking Universe, and it's a command grab that heals Slayer for some health and causes the opponent to stagger backwards on a successful grab. In Axard, the grab also gave you a temporary buff that made specials and supers act as if they counter hit on a normal hit. That's fucking insane! This is basically just a scarier way to have strike throw pressure since the damage from the grab is way higher than just a regular throw, with the downside in these games being that the throw has a whiff animation. We'll obviously be explaining how a lot of these moves can change when we get to Strive, but just in case you don't know, in Strive you can already whiff throws, while in Exard and Plus R, normal throws cannot be whiffed, only command grabs can, meaning that we may need to adjust the downside somehow. There is only one mainstay move left in his kit though. One massive thing that we have yet to talk about. One amazing move that must not be altered at any cost. Behold! What peak game design! What amazing properties! If this move was a person, I would marry it! It should run for president! Who cares what policies it has? Look at his charisma! What do you mean you wouldn't vote for Footloose Journey? I'll kick your fucking ass! Footloose Journey is an air stall combo move that exists. I don't need to explain this move to you. It's so famous that you already know everything about it. Moving on. Slayer's supers both look very cool, but if I'm entirely honest, they both just boil down to big punch. One of them goes horizontal, and one of them goes vertical, and can also be used in the air to go downwards. And that's most of Slayer's moves. Granted, we haven't talked about the plus R and XR specific moves yet. And originally I was gonna go over them, but I'm currently in crunch time, so we're just gonna have to gloss over them. Did you know that Slayer can, like, go to the other side of you in plus R? Big Bang Opera. So now that we know all about how Slayer used to play in the old Guilty Gear games, we need to look towards the future and ask how is he going to play once he makes it into Guilty Gear Strive? Well, let's begin by narrowing down the core moves that Slayer has, since there's a lot of things that he kept between XX and XR. Slayer has always had a step dash teleport. Slayer has always had link-based combos. Slayer has always had a dandy step. These three things feel like something that cannot be changed about Slayer. If any of these three things change, you could definitely argue that this character isn't Slayer. If you saw a man with a quiff in a suit running at the opponent, let's be real, that probably isn't Slayer now, is it? You could also say this with the links. However, I wouldn't be surprised if the devs were more lenient with what gadolings you can do. The likelihood is that the player may be able to cancel close slash into more things, like heavy slash or dust moves. However, I still think players should have to link off of most of their attacks if they want to do combos. It's also something that a lot of players say should be removed from the character to make him work in stride, and that is the removal of back dash cancel. Here's how their logic works. Strive has a dash macro. This dash macro makes inputting back dash easier. Inputting back dash easier could lead to really easy back dash cancel. Because of this, it shouldn't be in the game. I hate this argument, if I'm honest. Backdash Cancel is a core part of Slayer's game plan. He's supposed to be an annoying piece of shit who's able to completely ruin your pressure by just saying no and using a special move in your face while you block string him. His invincible command grab is bullshit though. Yeah! The fact that the dash button exists shouldn't mean that Slayer should lose an entire part of his identity though. Like, it's not even that hard to do anyway. You just do a TK input after doing backdash, like hello? And if you want to make it so that the dash button isn't a problem, then just have it so that the player has to manually dash if they want the invincibility. If we're already adding links, we can make it so they have to manually dash. Like what? Oh, but it's too bullshit for Strive. Asuka is right there with an entire Magic the Gathering commander deck where he's able to get you to block for 60 entire seconds. Jacko is able to force seven four-way mix-ups off of one good knockdown and still get corner pressure after it while being safe. So bad guy fucking kills you. You're gonna look at me and say that all this bullshit that is already in the game is not just as bad, if not fucking worse, than being able to backdash cancel? Seriously? It better be in there, Arctis. I swear to God. You can remove most of his kit, but as long as he has backdash canceling, I will take it. Anyway, 
I think most of his options from Dandy Step will probably stay. Powerbunk is an absolute shoe in since it's basically already a stride move in every game that it's in. The only real thing I'd say is likely to change is it's late, probably won't be plus on block. Strive overheads are either very negative or they're very slow and don't lead into anything. And I imagine it's late is probably going to change in accordance to one of these rules. The rest of the moves are completely up in the air. His command grab I could definitely see coming back. However, I imagine it would have a lot of recovery, similar to what Pop Buster is like, in order to make it more risky than a throw. But you get higher reward from it. I don't know if he'll still keep the buff. It'd be cool, but... Who knows? It wouldn't make sense for him to get the buff since it would really differentiate him from Nago. However, if he doesn't get it and just gets health back from it, that would also make a lot of sense. Mabunch is honestly iconic, so it coming back is very likely. However, if they decide to lead more into spamming pile bunkers, they might choose to remove it completely. I also think that Dandy Step is going to be turned into just one type of Dandy Step. There's not a lot of characters who have the same stance, but on different buttons and strides. So it would make more sense if they just put it on the punch button and maybe put something else on the kick button. And while it pains me to say it, the most iconic move in Guilty Gear history probably won't make it. We're gonna have to say goodbye to... To... Footloose Journey. You were too good for this world, Footloose Journey. Too strong. Your power was too great for Strive. This is truly how Guilty Gear Strive is ruining the Guilty Gear franchise. Anytime you see someone complain about anything in Strive, it's about Footloose Journey. Please just move on. If I could have my way, though, I'd give Slayer back Big Bang Upper in some way. Maybe adjust it so that it's a super, so he starts with a Big Bang and has him go into a second hit. Or maybe it's like a combo super, so it's sends them up and lets you get more extension. There's a non-zero chance that they actually make the animation of his Wild Assault Big Bang Upper as well, which would be a nice touch, but just, just give me a back. Just give me a back. It's so cool. You just fucking... What? Overall, though, I would say that Slayer probably isn't going to change too much in Guilty Gear Strive. There's a reason that he is called a Strive character, and it's not just because he absolutely pumps damage. His simple game plan translates extremely well to Guilty Gear Strive, and having him maintain the main parts of his kit will likely lead to a smooth and seamless transition for the character. While a lot of characters get drastic changes between the games, I believe that Slayer is already a natural fit. The only difference is we'll have to trim around a little bit of the fluff. And with that, we're at the end of the video. Thank you all for watching. I hope you had a good time. Let me know what you think Slayer's moveset will be in the comment section below. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next week. As always, a very special thanks to 64 Megahertz, Almost Lap Time, Ben from Canada, Savantis de Leon, Daniel Wiederix, Edison Lottery, Fexo, Games.png, I am Nauto, It's Riley, Knife and Spoon, Critty Cat, MP04, Mr. Clen, Ray W, Sergeant Cubby, Super Falcon, Tom Tanks, Velvet Puppy, Volta, and Zandatsu for being Tier 2 Patron supporters.